Hi, I'm Tim Talon of the Ragwood Refactory here in Springfield, Oregon. Recent project that we just completed and were able to uh, take to a number of shows through the summer was a very special 1936 Rearwind Speedster. This is a very interesting airplane because not only is it the only one that they built, it was the prototype for the whole series. And unfortunately, the series of airplanes that they did produce, they only did about a dozen of them. So this one is extremely rare. Now, a little Rearwind history. First of all, the Rearwind factory was in Kansas City and was started by Ray Rearwind. Now, Ray had two sons, Ken and Royce, and back in the late 20s, coming off of the great Lindbergh flight, the boys were very air-minded, shall we say, and Dad was willing to help them out in any way possible, and the best way was to start an airplane company and build airplanes. The first one was just a, a typical open cockpit biplane, and then uh, and they built a number of those. But then the next airplanes, and of course the Depression came along in 1930, 29, 30, 31, so they introduced a little airplane called the Rearwind Junior, which had a limited uh, success. And then, uh, then another design that was brought out about that time, in about 1934, was a Rearwind Speedster. And the Speedster became something of a a problem for the Rearwind Aircraft Company because the initial design would not um, complete all of the CAA tests at the time um, and so they had to redesign the thing and so that kind of put the thing on the back shelf and in the meantime they designed came out with the Sportster which was a very significant airplane and they built a great number of those but the Speedster being somewhat enigmatic became the the touchstone for the Rearwind Aircraft Company, the design was incredibly modern, sleek, and, and speedy, of course, thus the name Speedster, but because it couldn't complete the CAA certification process, they basically started with one airplane, and because it wouldn't work well, they literally started over again with a second prototype. And this is the one that we have restored over the last seven years here in the shop, and it is, Serial number 302, the end number is NC15865. This is the only Speedster that they built with a special engine, a Cirrus high drive engine. Very uh, unusual engine, it's a British design and it featured open rockers, open valves, open push rods, and thus, as we often, as we immediately found out, it also divulged an, a quite large quantity of oil <laughs> while the engine was running. So it's a very messy engine, but uh, we had it rebuilt and brought all back to new standards, and the engine has run beautifully uh, in this airplane for the past 50 hours. So when we got the airplane completed and, and finished the restoration, our first goal was to take it to Oshkosh, and that was a 21-hour flight. We did it in about three-hour segments, uh, we had the ground crew uh, following along behind, and we made it in four days, and the, sh and the show at Oshkosh was a great success. The airplane was uh, well received, and they immediately brought the airplane up from the uh, antique parking out to the Red Barn, right out in front of the, the headquarters for the Vintage Aircraft Association. So the airplane was on display all week at Oshkosh, and at the end of the week, uh, we were awarded the reserve grand champion, the Silver Lindy at, at Oshkosh. And here again, the airplane was extremely well received. People knew all about the rear wing airplane and uh, were very appreciative of the fact that this rare, one of a kind rear wing speedster um, was, was there at, at the um, uh, event. At Blakesburg, we were awarded the Grand Champion Trophy, uh, which was um, very highly appreciated, and a lot of people uh, were, were quite excited to see the, the airplane there. Then the final leg was from there to the National Aviation Heritage Invitational at Stead at Reno, uh, Nevada. And that was a very interesting show, um, and, it, and it brought out a lot of the interesting details about the Speedster. A lot of people were interested in it. There were not
perhaps as many people knowledgeable about the Speedster, so it was an opportunity to tell the story uh, about the rear one Speedster. Then uh, from there, the airplane was flown uh, to Sonoma Sky Park, where it uh, now resides, and owner Eric Rearwin um, is interested in showing the airplane, um, informing people, telling people about the Rearwin factory and the Rearwin family, and the uh, efforts that his, uh, basically his uncles, his two uncles, um, and his great-grandfather, um, how they were involved with the Rearwin Aircraft Company. It's been a great pleasure to work on this airplane, not only because of the, the challenges that it brought about as a restoration project, but because of its great history and, and its notoriety in terms of uh, the prototype aircraft and uh, really the, the signature aircraft for the Rear Wind Aircraft uh, Corporation. So that in, in and of itself was a great um, pleasure to work with that and get to fly the airplane. Uh, and, and enjoy the flying qualities of the plane. And now that, now that it's back to its owner and back to its home base, uh, we'll move on to the next project.